Alright, in this video we're going to see how to find the equation of a parabola, given information about it. Uh, in the first example we know a point on the parabola and a vertex. Right, so The first step in the process is to find the vertex, so if that's given to you then you've already done the first step. Alright, the next step is to find the leading coefficient. This is a little trickier. We're going to use the vertex formula. The vertex formula is y equals a, and then the quadratic term x minus h all squared plus k. Remember h and k are the coordinates of the vertex, so we actually can find the leading coefficient as long as we know the vertex and some other point. Let's go ahead and put in the vertex, so replace h with 1 half, first coordinate of the vertex, replace k with negative 5. We need another point on the parabola to use for x and y, and we're going to use the point given 3, 7. So x is 3 and y is 7. Now we have an equation with one unknown, that is a, the leading coefficient. So let's solve this for a. I'm going to subtract 1 half from 3, and you'll get 5 halves. And adding a negative 5 is the same as subtracting 5. Let's go ahead and square that fraction. So 5 squared is 5 squared is 25, and 2 squared is 4. All right. Now, to get a by itself, we need to get rid of this 5, so we're going to add 5 to both sides. And negative 5 and positive 5 add to 0. And 7 plus 5 is 12. To get rid of this 25 over 4, we need to multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. Reciprocal is 4 over 25. Now, 25 over 4 times 4 over 25 is just 1, so that goes away. And here we can multiply to get. Uh, 12 times 4 is 48 over 25. So 48 over 25 is the leading coefficient. Well, now we can go back and write the vertex form of the equation because we know A. And we know the h and k, right? h is 1 half and k is negative 5. So there is the equation for the parabola. Now you may want this in standard form. To get that, you're going to have to simplify this expression by multiplying it out. So remember that x minus 1, that quantity squared, really means you're multiplying that by itself. And now you're looking at foiling, distributing that out. So we'd have x times x, which is x squared. 
and we'd have negative 1 half x and negative 1 half x, and that would give us a negative x, and then a negative 1 half times a negative 1 half would be a positive 1 fourth. All right, now we need to distribute that 48 over 25. So 48 over 25 times x squared, 48 over 25 times negative x, and 48 over 25 times one-fourth. Uh, with the one-fourth, the 4 and the 48 can both be divided by 4, and so we go back to 12 over 25. Now to finish simplifying, we need to combine the constant terms 12 over 25 and negative 5. Uh, negative 5 would be negative 125 over 25. And so if you take negative 125 and you add 12, you'll get negative 113 over 25. So now it's in standard form. In case you need to do that, that's not always necessary. Let's take a look at another example of finding the equation. This time, instead of giving information about it, we're given a graph. Again, the first step is to find the vertex. By inspection, we can see that the vertex is the lowest point on the graph, where if it opens down, it's the highest point. The coordinates of the vertex are negative 1, 2. And we're going to need a second point on this graph, and so let's use the y-intercept 0, 3. So negative 1, 2, and 0, 3. Those are two points. And this one is the uh, hk, and this is just some other point. And we have that vertex formula. So we'll use that to find the value of a, the leading coefficient. So let's replace h with negative 1. And let's replace k with 2. Right, just replacing the vertex coordinates. Um, another point will be used to replace x and y, and we're using x is 0 and y is 3. Now we have an equation that just has a. We can solve for a. Uh, 0 minus negative 1, that's just 1. And 1 squared is just. 1, and a times 1 is just 1. So that all just goes away. The plus 2 we can get rid of by subtracting 2 from both sides. And positive 2 and negative 2 add to 0, and 3 minus 2 is 1. So a is 1. And we're now ready to write the equation. So we already knew h was negative 1 and k was 2. From looking at the graph, h is negative 1, k is 2. So we already had this set up, we just needed to know a, and we found out a was 1. And since a is just multiplied there with the quadratic term, you don't really need to put it if it's 1. Uh, similarly, if it's a negative 1, you can just put a negative sign. So you can actually just get rid of it. It's also nice to simplify this, subtracting a negative 1, and just write plus 1 on the inside. So this is our simplified vertex form. All right. Now, if we want to have this in standard form, we need to expand it as we did before. So 
So x plus 1 quantity squared is x plus 1 times x plus 1. And if we go ahead and multiply that out, we have x times x, which is x squared, plus x plus x, that would be plus 2x, and 1 times 1 is 1. And don't forget the plus 2 there. Right. So you combine like terms to finish, just add the 1 and the 2 and get a 3. And that's the standard form. So you can get equations from the graph or from a point and a vertex. And it's possible to get the equation from any three points on the parabola, but this leads to a nonlinear system of three equations and three unknowns. So it's a little beyond what we do in this class.